How's it going, everybody? It's nice to see you all this morning. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what Kickstarter is, but you guys already know that, obviously. Um, you know, we're here in Portland, and Portland, this is true as of a year ago, I'm sure it is, uh, has the most projects per capita of anywhere in the world. Um, yeah. So 1,400 launch projects, $7.5 million going to uh, creators here in Portland from around the world over the past three years, which works out to about $12 per person <laughs> in Portland. So there is a, a Kickstarter recovery at work here. Um, but, you know, Portland is also the first city in the world to have a page for its mayor to highlight the projects that he likes, based in Portland. Uh, Sam Adams started this about a year and a half ago. Uh, more mayors have done this since, more hopefully will. Uh, but I think it's a sign of how engaged Portland is to the, to the creative community and how important it is here. Um, and of course, being here at XOXO, uh, you know, the first Kickstarter festival and Kickstarter-funded festival um, brings, you know, an additional layer. I think this is probably the biggest gathering of backers there has ever been. Um, every one of you here backed this project to be here. Uh, and it's, it's kind of amazing. I was thinking about that a lot um, when thinking about this presentation. I actually looked at what everyone in this room has backed. Um, and so there's 735 people who backed this project and collectively we've supported over 5,000 projects. Um, and we also have the Midas Touch 80% of these projects were successfully funded. It's 44% for projects overall. So we have really good taste. Um, really good taste. And here you can see what the 10 most funded projects are um, by XOXO backers. So like maybe four or five of those are big blockbuster things. The rest are very internet-y things. It says a lot about us. Um, but one really cool thing is that a lot of the backers of this project were Kickstarter creators uh, themselves. And I, if you are a Kickstarter creator, could you raise your hand just to make clear who you are? That's awesome. That's awesome. So there are 80 projects launched by XOXO backers. 37,000 individual people backed them. So you could see these concentric circles just, just rippling out. You know, this is, this is the room of the 1%. You guys are the 1%. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, really exciting to be here. Uh, so, Normally when we talk about Kickstarter, we're trying to explain to people what it is and how to use it. Um, and this is one room where that is useless. You know, you guys know that already. Um, which makes this uh, kind of an intimidating talk to give, I have to say. Um, but I want to start just sort of by walking through where we are at this moment. Um, Kickstarter launched on April 28, 2009. So we're like three and a quarter years in. Um, and so far there have been 70,000 products that have launched. Um, 62,000 of those have gotten at least one pledge, and about 30,000 have been funded, have reached their goals. Um, and those have been supported by almost 3 million people, and over $300 million has been distributed to projects in the past three and a half years. Um, and this is all just, you know, self-determination, people putting things up, other people supporting them, people just, you know, trying to create something they want to see exist in the world. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's really incredible. It's really, really incredible. Um, all these stats that I'm showing are actually publicly available. I actually don't know if people know this, but we have a, a page on the site, Kickstarter slash help slash stats, that has live numbers for everything. Everything. Total transparency. Um, successful projects, unsuccessful projects, every number broken down by category. Um, and it's really fun to poke around this page. I really encourage you to do it. Um, I, I look at it all the time and do, you know, just open up calculator on my Mac and, and do some division. Um, these are some things you can see. You know, you can see that 89% of all dollars go to funded projects. That once a project hits 60% of its goal, 98% of the time so far it has been successful. Um, and so you can really learn a lot about what the dynamics are at the play. And, and we love this stuff because we really look at Kickstarter as an experiment in so many ways. You know, we, we had these ideas we wanted to put out there. We had this notion of all or nothing funding. You know, maybe it would work to motivate people. Um, we'd actually projected uh, very early on that 5% of projects would successfully reach their goals, um, and instead it's 44%. So either the site's doing really well, or we're really bad at projecting, or maybe a little bit of both. Uh, but it's, we just really like the notion that this is something that we're figuring out on the fly, that we're all just trying to see what people do. It's just an expression of you know, 3 million people figuring things out. Um, but this year has, has been an exciting one. This year, we had a, a blog post about this this past week, but this year we called the year of the game. Um, last year, $3 million was pledged to video games. So far this year, this big bar, 
over here, over $50 million has. Um, and actually, since we put up this post, it's been something like another $10 million that's been pledged to video games and, and, ga and board games and card games. Um, so it's a category that's really, really exploded. We actually put together a, a montage of project videos um, about video games to kind of give a sense of, of why we think that's happened. So let me show that to you. Salutations. I'm Joshua E.C. Newman. I'm Luke Peterschmidt. My name is Jay. And I'm Tiffany. I'm Neil Stevenson. Hi, I'm Jake Lewandowski. And I'm Matt Lewandowski. Hi, we're the men who wear many hats. It's another hat. Hello, America. I'm Tim Schaefer, and I'm a man of many passions. And we make video games. When we went to PAX, what was the number one question we were asked? Is it a billion dollar franchise? Probably not. Then I can't help you. So you're turning down a game that the fans want. Well, screw that. It's the sum total of every expressive medium of all time made interactive. Like, how is that not? It's awesome. I hope to make something strange and unique for you to enjoy. I can't think of anything more boring than doing something for the sole purpose of making money. We really love games, but we feel like a lot of the current crop of mainstream games has been sort of polluted by money um, and catering to the lowest common denominator. And, um, we want to do something different. And we want to do it without any pesky publishers telling us to dumb it down or to make it tamer so we can get it into Walmart. Okay, let's talk about a few minor tweaks. All right, well, I don't want to stray too far from the original. Oh, no, no, I mean, these are just tiny modernizations, if you will. Take, for instance, uh, we would like it to be a first-person shooter. Excuse me? In our numbers, people, they tell me romantic vampires are really big right now, and we feel like they would seamlessly fit into the Wasteland storyline. Maybe we should use birds as weapons. Ooh, that's good, that's good. I'm glad we're on the same sheet of music. We didn't want anybody, any outside influence holding the purse strings on this. We wanted to design a game that, that we really felt passionately about. It's not just a game, like, it's, I'm, I'm so closely attached to it. And this is my identity. I've got a shot at making the video game that I've been dreaming about. I'm confident that we can make it really, really awesome. This is what we heard all day yesterday. It's just people making things. That's all it is, people making things, putting their ideas out in the world and people responding to them. And since we put up that Year of the Game post, there's been another million dollar game. This is uh, Homestuck. This is the 12th project to raise a million dollars in the past six months. Um, and then just yesterday, the 13th, uh, this game from Obsidian, this launched on Friday morning yesterday across uh, a million dollars. So it was the second project across a million dollars in just 24 hours. Um, so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it's, you know, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, this explosion that's happened, I think, has made people, well, it's made a lot of people look at Kickstarter for the very first time. Um, and I think it's maybe made people think that we're a bigger company than we are. Um, this is the Kickstarter team. We're 40 people. Um, this is everybody. There's, there's 20 people who work on the product and dev and who are designers. There's 20 people who work with the community, doing customer support, helping people with their projects, uh, editorial stuff. That's it, 40 people. Um, you know, we've stayed small very intentionally um, because we're trying to do some, this in a, in a way that feels right to us. Um, we don't really have business backgrounds. Um, the three of us who founded it, Perry, who's our, our CEO, and he's the guy who had the idea. Um, he's an artist and a musician before this. Um, Charles, uh, who's our creative director, he was a designer. Uh, and I was a music journalist before this. You know, this was really born out of I was just thinking this would be cool. This would be cool if people could do the thing that they love. Um, and, and, but it's, it's gotten bigger and bigger. It's gotten bigger and bigger. Um, this space that we're in right here, uh, this is a building in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Um, it's a historical building, part of an old pencil factory um, that we bought. We bought a building in Greenpoint to be our permanent home, um, to really put down roots and you know, create a space that's ours forever. Um, and that's how we're thinking about this. We're thinking about this as forever. Um, that's, that's our intention. Um, this is our office now. It's hard, it's hard to see, obviously it's dark, but it's, it's three floors of a tenement building, Lower East Side, on Rivington Street. Um, so the stairs are really creaky and perilous. Uh, we all have to be split up on different floors, but it's like being in a home, and, and this is where we are every day. 
Um, and it, it really, it's, it, it's a lot of what our work feels like. Um, so even as this has gotten bigger and bigger, you know, this is who we are. And I always think back to this. This is the very first project that was successfully funded. Um, three backers, $35, a guy said, I'll draw you a picture of something for five bucks. That was it. <laughs> that was it. This is, the first, this is the first successful project. And, yeah. And, and these are still the projects that we love the most. It really is. This is, this, is who, this is who Kickstarter is. This is what we think about. We love looking at projects that we're like, oh, that's awesome. We you know, wish we could do that. That's super cool. Just things that make you feel like you can do things. Um, that really lay, you know, level the playing field. And, and I don't know. That, that's, that's really what it's about for us. Um, but you know, this is kind of, this XOXO is, is fantastic. I mean, it's, yesterday was incredible. Um, and you, know, you guys did such a great job. And it's really kind of Andy Bayocon, and no apologies to the other Andy, but uh, it's kind of Bayocon, and, and you, can't, you can't think about Andy without thinking about the meta universe of everything. Um, and that's really what I want to talk to everyone about today. Um, so, you know, those of us who work at Kickstarter, we spend all our time just looking at projects. That's really our greatest love. And, and we just see all these weird things that people do that are hard for us to talk about. And I thought if there's one place I could talk about these things, it would be here. Um, so I want to talk about the meta universe of Kickstarter, everything around it, uh, how it's being used as a medium, how it's used for comedy, how it's parodied, uh, how people steal from it. All of these things uh, are really interesting to us. Um, so this image right here, this is a project image, uh, Detroit versus painting a meta Kickstarter. This is a project by a guy named Jerry Paffendorf. Here's Jerry. Jerry's the most prolific creator in all of Kickstarter. Uh, Jerry's had 27 successful projects. They're all based in Detroit. Um, he does these weird, like, civic art things that I can't even begin to explain. Um, but he's just kind of this mad genius. And, and he's been with us from the very, very beginning. He launched a project the first couple of weeks. And he kind of embodies, like, this, this part of Kickstarter, just seeing Kickstarter as a tool to do a lot of other things. Um, but I went back and I tried to look at all the meta Kickstarter projects to get a sense of what they, what they were. And the very first one was actually by Charles, uh, who's here, co-founder, creative director. That's a project he did with Nick Felton. Um, a lot of people might know Nick as a, as, a, as a designer, does a lot of data stuff, infographics. Um, they did a project to rethink Kickstarter stats. So that was the, that was the first meta project. Um, the second meta project was, was by me. It's a project called This Is Not a Kickstarter Shirt. Uh, if there are any Fugazi fans in the audience, you might get that reference. But uh, yeah. Uh, but this project was, uh, at the end of the project, whatever the final stats were, how many backers and dollars would just be printed on a shirt and everyone would get it. Um, so that was the whole idea. 532 people did it. Uh, I sent the shirts out. Maybe some of you have them. I see someone waving right on. Yeah, who backed that project? Raise your hands. That's awesome. We should have emailed about something. Uh, but it is a sign of how like, reflexive the site has become. Just a couple months ago, someone launched another one of these. <laughs> Not another Kickstarter shirt. Uh, if someone would like to launch a third, I encourage you to do it. Just, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um, there's a Kickstarter's Guide to Kickstarter. There are a lot of these. There are a lot of these. There's a, a Kickstarter to make a Kickstarter video. This was successful. Um, uh, this is one that we really, really love. This is create the first Kickstarter strange loop. Um, so the goal of this project was to have an unsuccessful project. Uh, so it's definitely the, the best unsuccessful project ever. I love the first sentence of the reward for $1. It is against the conceptual basis of this project for anything tangible to be gained by participation. <laughs> what more do you need to know? Um, it's a project recently uh, to define what conceptual art is by writing a letter to Kickstarter to ask us what we define conceptual art as. Most of the Kickstarter staff backed this project. Um, <laughs> Even James Franco launched a project for a museum of non-visible art. So people really like to use this to play around. And it's, it's also, Kickstarter has become a, kind of a tool for comedy. Um, the Daily Show made a fake Kickstarter site during their Republican primary, and they posted this, uh, a project for Newt Gingrich's campaign. Um, <laughs> the best reward for $100,000, for $100, pledge $100,000, and you can be divorced uh, by Newt Gingrich while suffering from the terminal disease of your choice. Um, it's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, someone recently made a mock project for Breaking Bad. The deadline five and a half months to go, according to the oncologist. McSweeney's launched a project for Greece. 
It included the Olympia Dukakis level, the Michael Chiklis level, and the Telly Savalas level. Uh, someone tried to explain the New York Times paywall through Kickstarter reward structure because how complicated it was. Um, so, uh, a sort of a darker tone, uh, ITP students did a, a project for like social vigilante justice in the form of Kickstarter with Kickstriker, so to take on Coney. Um, so really strange. Uh, this one got a lot of play. A guy wanted to post a project to buy Kickstarter. Um, you know, uh, this one right here, uh, this is not a Kickstarter parody. This is a Chinese clone of Kickstarter. Um, they're actually, clones came up a lot yesterday, and I was talking to Bree last night at the bar, and, you know, we, there's like 300 Kickstarter clones we never ever talk about, so I just would show a couple. Here's the Chinese one, here's the French one, the Polish one, oh, the, sorry, the Russian, yeah, uh, Japanese. Another Japanese one, this one is also cloning projects. I <laughs> came across this on their homepage last night. That's a live project on Kickstarter right now, so I'm not, sure, not sure what's going on there. Um, but really, I think when you're, when you're talking about Kickstarter, you, you know, you're thinking of two things. You're thinking of those tiered levels of rewards, and you're thinking about the project video. And that's really kind of defining uh, how people experience Kickstarter. And more and more, it's, it's being parodied, and it's being parodied pretty well. Um, if you search YouTube right now, there's a little over 400 Kickstarter parody project videos. Um, and I wanted to show a couple of my favorites uh, here. Um, the first of which is, is just very appropriate for here at XOXO, and this was a a video by Portlandia that aired earlier this year. <laughs> I like the product, the product improvement that IFC recommended there with the message button on the pledge. We should think about that. Um, but the, the first parody video that I remember seeing was one that Funny or Die did. Uh, and here it is. <laughs> so good, so good. Um, the next, the next, I'm just showing videos now, apologies, but uh, <laughs> the next video is a, a parody of Michael Bay posting a Kickstarter to make Bad Boys 3. <laughs> what I love about these videos is that they're using the form of Kickstarter, you know, to tell the joke. Like, you know, comedy needs structure to be, to, I think, to really do well, and, and so you have this easy series of, like, tiered ridiculousness. Um, but the things that people are responding to you know, we never told people how to structure the rewards or how to make their videos or anything. Uh, there's sort of a collective intelligence that's emerged over time of how to do this thing. You know, we, we really gave no instructions. And so all these things are kind of riffing on that as well as the form. And um, the last one of these I wanted to show was one that just went up uh, a week or two ago. I just love the international shipping joke. That's, that's my favorite part of the whole, the whole video. Um, but so these are ways that people have riffed on Kickstarter, but, but there's also been uh, a way that the project videos have really evolved over time. And there's now kind of a set of like, I don't know, five to 10 different types of videos that you can do. Um, it really started with Allison Weiss. I don't know if anyone remembers that project. It was just the third week of Kickstarter, but that sort of created a template that everyone worked with. And there's a new one that becomes a template that everyone, that everyone works with then. Um, and so a team, uh, our team, uh, a guy named Mike McGregor, a guy named Tomas Warner, uh, we have put together these sort of um, montages of some of the memes that we see on Kickstarter. Um, this is something we're going to be doing a lot more in the future, and we, we made three especially for today. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show the first one. You know, Amanda Palmer is doing the Bob Dylan subterranean homesick blues. I think Frank Camaro was kind of doing the same with his. But the videos are doing it now. We've seen a lot more of these after Amanda Palmer. And now people are doing the Amanda Palmer. You know, they don't even know about the Bob Dylan this is coming from. So there's this, this way that people are just learning and stealing from each other. Um, we see the same thing with, uh, if you remember Goodfellas, there's this scene, the Copacabana scene. It's very legendary. The long single take of Ray Liotta walking through the kitchen end of the club. And it's like the long walk and talk where you just see all these things happening around someone. Um, and about two years ago, there's a film project went up called I Am I by a woman named Jocelyn Town. 
that had this amazing four-minute single-take video of her just moving through the scene. Um, and it was by far the best video that had ever gone up at Kickstarter at the time. She ended up raising over $100,000. It was the first film project to raise over $100,000. And I think that video uh, was exactly the reason why. But that has since become something that we see very regularly on Kickstarter. So this starts with Jocelyn in the middle here. So after that happened, I figured I should ask some actors if they wanted to be in the movie. That's what it and I realized I'm married to a pretty great actor. To now we're faced with a moral battle. Since we're shooting on the movie, we have to play off the movie. We have to play off the movie. Hi, I'm Yancy from Kickstarter. Hi, my name is Yancy. Welcome to Kickstarter. That's how Casper's going to be. We're also going to be talking about the young guys. This is when we have to be in July. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Now we have all these single take videos that people do. And you can see three of those feature me. Um, this has become sort of a Kickstarter standard house video that we make. We've only made three so far, but I think every video we make will be something like this. Um, and I actually wanted to show the first one that we made because it shows you the office. It gives you a sense of what the team is. Um, we made this inspired by IMI. We're trying to pay tribute to it. Um, you can't see, but in, in an early scene of this video I'm going to show, every computer monitor is showing the IMI video, but the camera didn't pick it up. Uh, but this is something that, that the team made one night. We were a little drunk uh, after work. Um, and it was, the, it was the third take that we did. But here it is. Here's our office. My name is Yancy. Welcome to Kickstarter. We asked you to come here today because we wanted to tell you about the second annual Kickstarter Film Festival that will be happening July 9, 2011 on a rooftop in Brooklyn, New York, atop of the Old American Can Factory. It's going to be a special night. We really hope that you can join us. We're going to be screening videos from Kickstarter projects. We're going to be, all of us are going to be on hand. We're going to show the best and the brightest of what's happened on Kickstarter so far. We did this last year and it was such a success we had to do it again. We're doing it with rooftop films and we couldn't be more excited about it. So I wanted to bring you into the Kickstarter office and let you see how we're getting ready for this year's festival. If you pardon me, we're going to have to keep it down for just a second. Justin's on a call. This is our conference room here. So we've been studiously preparing for this year's festival. We've been watching every single project video. We've been doing... Sorry, we're still working on it right now. But this right here, this is Kickstarter headquarters. Everything happens no, no, here. No, 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 no. From beginning to end, we look at proposals. Yes! We celebrate yeah. successful. New Hall of Fame. Looks like they found a winner. So everything that happens at Kickstarter happens here. And this year's festival, we're going to feature 16 films. Documentaries, features, shorts, some project videos, some weird things that we think are really going to blow your mind. If we could just stop right here for just a second. This is my favorite part of the whole office. This is a piece from James Franco's Imaginary Art Project. Is the camera able to pick that up? Do you see? Cool. It's, it's just great. So we've been thinking really hard about how do, we, how do we make this year's festival better than last year's. And you know what we did? We turned to the data and we thought about Let's look at the numbers. Let's analyze how it is that you make the perfect film festival. Let's make a list of all the things that you need to really nail it. And let's make sure we get them exactly right. So we've been working so hard, we've been working tirelessly to make sure that every single piece of this is perfect. Just for you. We really hope that you can make it. We've been testing rewards, making sure they meet our standards for what we're looking for. At the festival itself, it's not just movies. There's going to be project creators. There's going to be fenders there, all people who made projects on Kickstarter. It's too hot. <laughs> we think it's going to be an amazing night, and we really hope that you can be here. There's going to be about 500 people here, all your future friends, all watching great films, all joining you together. But it's almost 9 o'clock. It's time to begin. So please back this project $10 and come join us for the second annual Kickstarter Film Festival. Thank you. Woo! So. We tried to pack that. We packed that with like 10 references to different projects, and you know, we're trying to make the meta, you know, Kickstarter office is the meta universe, kind of like this, the Sports Center commercials, if you've seen those. Um, there's one last montage I, I wanted to show you before we finish up, um, and, and this, one, this one I think you're going to love. Oh, hi. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, hi. Oh, 
Oh, hey, how's it going there? Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hi there. I definitely didn't see you come in there. Oh. 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 Oh, oh hi. Hey. Oh. oh. You've come. Oh. Oh. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I didn't see you come in there. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hey! Oh, hi. I didn't feel you there. <laughs> enhance. Why don't it enhance? Oh, hello. We didn't see you there. Yeah, I bet you think that you interrupted our meeting. But don't worry, you didn't. Mm -mm. We were just acting. <sighs> so we were tracking all kinds of things, like every video where a cat jumps on a keyboard while they're trying to talk into the camera. Like, this is how we think about the site. It's just really trying to track all these things. Um, you know, again, this is, this is the Kickstarter team. This is everybody. It's on our team page. There's 40 people. About 12 of those people are here. If you are uh, work at Kickstarter, can you raise your hands so people could just know that we're all around you. We're all around you. Um, and, and considering the pedigree of the people in this room, I have to show this next slide. And all the open positions at Kickstarter right now, there are eight roles available. Um, if you're interested, please email us, jobs at Kickstarter. I'm Yancey at Kickstarter. We'd love to hear from you, and thank you for your time.